So uh, you have to put the work in for your soul to get to the level it's supposed to be. So you put the work in by meditating the word, spending time in the word of God. And the more you operate in the word of God, uh, being memorized in your soul, what you're doing is you're, you're getting your soul to 100%. And then moving in prayer always, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, dealt with something amazing. It said that uh, all prayer always in the spirit, all prayer always in the spirit, all prayer and supplication in the spirit, always. So Ephesians 6, 18 dealt with that for you to move in the, the, the intensity of prayer, you have to use your tongues. You have to. That's the only way. For you to get built up in the power of God for prayer, you have to operate in tongues. So if you think about this, all throughout the 24 hours that you have, you have to use your time correctly. Now, saints, the whole test of life is time because there's some people that's only in your life because time hasn't happened yet. And I want you to think about this. Some people right now are in your life because time hasn't happened yet. When time happened, you won't see them. Time is such an important part of the anointing because time is the ability of God to examine a person's heart. Time, time, time. If you think about it like this, Joseph played with his brothers when he was 13, 12, when he was eight, seven, six, five, four. But then time happened after 17 years old. And now this same Joseph is in a pit. This same Joseph has been sold by slaves at the hands of the same people. But what we are seeing that time has happened. Before time happens, Joseph is playing with his brothers. When time happens, Joseph is being sold by his brothers. Time happened. Time is such an important realm of God because when time is moving, you will start understanding why God put your life the way he put it. You'll understand why God picked who's supposed to be in your life. Time is such an important messenger. Um, if you look at what Apostle James was teaching apostolically, he said, let patience have her perfect work. Now, one of the weapons of patience is time. Now, I want you to look at this from the spirit aspect, though. When I say patience, I'm not talking about a quality. I'm talking about an angel. One of her greatest weapons is time. So saints, whenever the angel patience is moving, her ministry, it facilitates itself through time. So her job is to use time as a tester. Time as a purger, time as a warning, time as a trainer, 
time as a helper. Marovo sharande kiso reve kerava razovo reve. And when patience is really ready to perform her ministry towards you, she uses time. How many times in your life did you didn't see what God wanted you to see until time? Just think about it. How could I miss that? How? How could I miss that? No, 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 no. That very thing is the same thing that God been saying, but you're not going to hear it until time. I'm about to start the teaching. I'll start the teaching in a couple more minutes. But time, time is connected to every person. Time is to connect it to every place. Time is connected to everything. There are things that have time attached to it. Some people have gotten cars repossessed, but they recognize that it was time for that thing that you had without God's permission to be gone. Some people have gotten evicted from places, but they didn't understand that this was the time for them to officially be translated from one geography to the next. Often time, time is something you pray against when really you should be praying with. It's there to help you. And it shows you things that you already should have saw, but your soul wasn't in the place to see it. Your soul wasn't in the place to receive it. Your soul wasn't in the place to agree with it. Time. If you remember, Abraham is talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And he's talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. But Sodom and Gomorrah is carrying a time that Abraham cannot view. Watch. So... There's time that Abraham starts to use. And the time he uses is not to agree with God, but the time is to de debate, deliberate, converse, and even attempt to change God's plan. So Abraham talks and talks. He's using time. But watch this. Time goes past. Finally, God reveals to Abraham. I already set out what I'm going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah. But I just want you to agree with me. The word of God said that Abraham went back to his place, which means the place of humility. The place of righteousness. The place of agreement. And Abraham decided, okay, now I understand. I could see from your angle, Lord. I can comprehend what you're communicating. It took Abraham time to agree with Sodom and Gomorrah's judgment. Let's go to Lot. 
La is in Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels tell, these three men tell Lot, get out of here. Lot delays. Time is going past. As time is going and going and going and going. And then there comes a time where the angels wrestle with Lot. Get out of here, man. Now, as a result of the time, now we see that Lot finally gets out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lot is moving and moving, but he has his wife and children with him. The word of God said that Lot's wife looked back. Now, as a result of that, she was devoured by the Lord. What I want you to see is this. It took time for Lot to see himself. It took time for Lot to see Sodom and Gomorrah. It took time for Lot to see his own wife. It took Lot's wife time to see herself. But when she had saw herself, it was the end of time. Listen to me. Time is so powerful that there's people that's living the rest of their time in hell because they didn't value her. There's people that's spending eternity under, in the lake of fire right now because of their disrespect to time. They didn't let time show them who they was. They didn't let time be used to discover who God is. They wasted their time. We go to the book of Ecclesiastes. If you study Solomon's whole messages, what was his message? His message is everything is vanity. You know what vanity really means? Wasted time. How many times have you spent hours with somebody that wasn't even going to be in your future? And you could have spent that time with God. How many times have you spent your time in relationships? That wasn't even going to last. It wasn't even God's plan. Vanity is wasted time. It is time without God's wisdom saturating it. So what is vanity? Vanity is time that disregards the Holy Spirit. What is vanity? It is time that is not inspired by the word of God. What is vanity? It is time that Jesus doesn't have his hand in. What is vanity? It is time that produces the harvest of eternal hell. What is vanity? It is time that depletes your soul, leaves your soul in a famine. What is vanity? It is time that attracts sickness, diseases, viruses. What is vanity? It is time that causes your health to be lost. What is vanity? It is time that doesn't unlock the blessing of the Lord. It doesn't activate the blessing of Abraham. What is vanity? It is time that didn't, didn't bring you closer to the Lord. What is vanity? It is time that produced the grief of the Holy Spirit. What is vanity? It is time where you became the enemy of your own progress. What is vanity? It is time invested in lust. What is vanity? It is time invested in folly. 
Foolishness, ignorance is the activation of wrong knowledge. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil operating through you. It is the mindset of serpents, the mindset of scorpions. What is vanity is the mindset of demons driving you, inspiring you, motivating you. What is vanity? It is the ability of Satan being unlocked in your nature, being unlocked in your person. It is the characteristics of God's enemies moving through your own being. What is vanity? It is where your soul drifts, your soul wanders, your soul misses. What is vanity? It's a life without God. It's a life without the word. It's a life without prayer. Prayerlessness is vanity. Whatever you do are opposite to prayer. Communication with God is vanity. What is vanity is insanity. Is insanity. It is the soul operating outside of its living place where Jehovah made it to operate from. That's what vanity is. Your soul cannot discern God, hear God, operate with God. It misses God. It bruises God. It, is a, it offends God. It, vanity is decisions that block your destiny. It's decisions that block the divine schedule, vanity. Let's start the teaching. So whenever you get into the, 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 the presence of God, his presence is carrying that prosperity grace. And really being in God's presence really mean being in his word. You're not in God's presence until you're in his word. You're not in the spirit until you're in the word. You're not in prayer until you're in the word. Even effective prayer has to be driven by an imagination of the word. Effective sowing. You're not really sowing correct until you're imagining the word. Anything you do without imagining the word and the rewards that come from what the word promised, you cannot keep on doing. Consistency is tied into divine meditation. Consistency is tied into divine meditation. If your imagination is not anointed, nor can your fruits be anointed. If your imagination is not empowered, nor could your choices be empowered. All of your behavior will be the slave of the master called imagination. Think about that. All of your behavior will be a slave to the master called imagination. Whatever you do without your imagination driven by the word will not be effective. Consistency is driven by divine meditation. Divine meditation is the ability of God working in you for longevity. God is eternal because he controls his soul. God is eternal because he manages his thoughts. God is eternal because he doesn't let his soul be overtaken by evil. Consistency is evidence of a healthy soul. Consistency is evidence of a healthy soul. I've been in pastoring for over a decade now. I've been pastoring for over a decade. Been over souls for over a decade, going on two decades. One thing that I've really noticed is this, that I've studied the, me the mental health of people. I've studied people that do things because they are told to do it. I also study people that do things because they don't want the consequence for not doing it. But then I also study people that do things because they have understanding. In my observation, what I've realized that the people that did things because they was told to do it, the people that do things because they don't want the consequence for not doing it, and the people that did things because of their understanding, the people that did things with their understanding are, are always the people that don't get touched by the enemy. The people that do things out of fear don't make it. Time. The people that do things because they're told don't make it. Time. 
The people that do things because they have a good understanding are those that are preserved from evil. You say, well, prophet, well, what's the difference between all this? Because understanding is where even if you're not told or even if there's no consequence, you're still going to do it because you understand that this is something that God loves. This is something that knits you into a friendship with God. It causes companionship to increase, intimacy to double, and oneness to multiply. I recognize that the people with understanding are always the people that increase in favor. The people that do things because they fear, the people that do things because they're told, they don't make it. The fear of God is God really crying out to be loved. Have you ever understood that even God's consequences is really his cry to be loved? Mm. So even the fear of God is to lead you right back into the whole purpose why you were made, which was to love God. Even consequences is God's cry to be loved. Correction is God's cry to be heeded. Correction is God's cry for your attentiveness. Imagine people when they get corrected by God, how they say, oh, well, what about them? Oh, uh, oh, uh, what about them? Why, how, why, why, why? And imagine God like, the whole reason for me correcting you is because I'm telling you to pay attention. Paying attention offends you? <laughs> Paying attention to me makes you mad? Paying attention to me shuts down your servanthood? Wow, it tells me a lot about you. Even rebuke is God's cry to be obeyed. Think about it. Have you discerned the love language of the Father, the love language of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is down on earth showing you the true heart of the Father. What the Holy Ghost does day and night is he speaks words to quicken your soul to how God really wants you to be, what God wants you to pursue. There's an inaccuracy that could live and grow in you if you don't take the time to let the Holy Spirit have lordship over you. There's things that you could start missing if you don't really seek God. There's some of you all right now that you can't see the impending danger that's about to happen in your life. I hate to prophesy, but if you could see the heartbreak that's about to happen to you, I want you to hide this word in your heart. As a prophet of God, I've been sent to you tonight to prepare you for the storm and the war. I've come prophetically because February is always a month of the breaking of the heart. Do you understand that God created months, times, seasons? Because there's an objective to that time, that period which means that there is an aim, a strategy, a subject, a theme 
to God's mind. The word of the Lord to you is that this month is really your surgery of God breaking your heart. Breaking your heart. You know why he breaks your heart? Psalm 51, David said, created me, contrite spirit, renew a right spirit within me, a contrite heart. He talk about how the Lord, the contrite spirit, a broken spirit, God will not despise it. That's what he's looking for in Psalm 51. Well, the month of February is a month where God starts to break your heart. He breaks down your heart because something is coming to you that you'll have to now officially agree with God. You won't be able to run from it. You won't be able to reject it. It's a time where you could take great grace to walk in righteousness and agreement with God and grace could reign in your life. Or it's a time where you'll fall away. There are portals in every year where God increases his working. It just goes back to John 15. Every branch in me that bear fruit, the Father purges it that you might that it might bear more fruit. It might bring forth more fruit. You know what that's talking about? It's talking about God breaking your heart. It's talking about God saying, I permitted this, but not no more. I allowed this, but not no more. February is always a volcano. It's always a volcano. A volcano, you never see it until it officially starts spewing out lava. But the eruption was already occurring. The visibility of that fire, the visibility is the evidence that there's a volcano. But that volcano was already operating even when it was invisible. The thing that you see come out was already coming up. It was already traveling. It comes out. Once you see this. When the Holy Spirit is purging you and bringing you into the next place, guess what? He has to do something with your heart for your heart to see things his way. Because the truth of the matter is why God doesn't deal with you on certain things because your heart is in disagreement. So when the time officially comes, judgment, what the Lord starts to do is show you, open your eyes. Let me say this to you as well. I found out that uh, Morris Sorello, he, he's, he's in glory right now. His birthday is October the 2nd. His birthday is on October the 2nd. Morris Sorello is in, is in uh, the third heaven right now.
if I'm not mistaken, his birthday is on October the 2nd. He was born the same day as me. Uh, Morcerello uh, started the wave of miracles in, in his generation as well. He came out with a lot of other generals during that time. But he, he went on to be with the father uh, uh, towards the latter part, the latter months, November, December, January, like in that uh, final, well, last year per se. If you remember last year, I did a conference and on the day of the conference, Prophet T.B. Joshua went home to be with the father. His spirit was taken from his body. And the spirit of Moses was on him. Moses was living out his life through Prophet T.B. Joshua. Many of the people that were supposed to like be, you know, passing stuff called him different evil things, but that just come along with the persecution that come along with being God's true friend. You'll have to experience that. But while I was demonstrating the Holy Spirit on that day, during that same time he was taken. Now I understand, I understand a lot of things concerning that. But the same way we are, we are in a dispensation right now where both Moses and Elijah, they are preaching the gospel through different generals. The spirit of Elijah and the spirit of Moses. Oftentimes we look at Solomon as if like he was the wisest, right? Which he, he really, yeah, Solomon is a league of his own. He'll always have that in the spirit. But remember, Moses, his major anointing was wisdom. Moses, his highest anointing was wisdom. So all the miracles that we saw, signs and wonders, all the mighty things that God did from the Red Sea, from the, uh, the, the, the water turning into blood or whatever, all the things that Moses did, his major anointing was wisdom. So, you know, oftentimes if a, if a man is operating in wisdom, like somebody would be like, you know, the spirit of Solomon, I sent Solomon on it. Life is full of parables. And the wisest people are the people that could de decode the parable. If you ever get in the presence of someone that's a divine leader, meaning God uses them to lead people, there's always a code that you're supposed to unlock all the time. If you ever get in the presence of someone that is in leadership, they are supernatural. They have a supernatural ministry. There's something that they're carrying. There's a mystery. Even their dealing with you is a parable. The reason why they're in your life is a parable. Imagine how many people leave the parable unraveled or, 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 or let me use a better word. It never got unraveled. It never got decoded. Imagine how many people get in the presence of a man of God 
and they never get the message of why the man of God is there. They never decode the message. They, 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 don't, they don't decode the message. Life is full of parables. There was a man that came. There was once a man that came to the Jewish people. And this man was not really understood by a lot of people. But something happened where this man started. He got a little notoriety from certain people. This man operated in, in a similar power like God. And there were some people that, 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 that really respected the man, but there's other people that looked at him like, you know. So at the end of the day, That man had power over his generation. His generation needed him. Not only did his generation need him, but the generations after his generation needed him because his gospels or his revelation or his teachings was going to be the path to eternal life. This man's name was Jesus. Your man of God in your life is a parable. Your man of God in your life is a storyline of God being continued. So when your man of God comes in your life, you must know how to use the quality of suspicion. You should become suspicious. Why is my man of God in my life? Why, why did he show up? What's not right in my life? Who's not right in my life? What's going to be changed? What needs to be protected? Where's the sacrifice? What am I supposed to sacrifice? Where am I going to be tested? Is it really a test is every, if everything is obvious? Is it a test if my emotions are always joyful? Is it really a test? If, it, if, if it's a test, is it really a test? If I'm having my way? Is it really a test if everything that I hear makes me say, oh, oh, I... I detect that in the spirit. Oh, I discern that. Oh, I, oh, this just confirmation. This is confirmation. It was in my spirit 10 years ago. It's just confirmation. So where's the test? Where is the test? Is it eating? No, because I enjoy eating. Is it drinking? No, because I enjoy drinking. Is it laughing? Because I enjoy laughing. No. Is it entertainment? Because I enjoy entertainment. See, these are things that people don't ask themselves. But life is full of parables. And if you have a man of God, your man of God is carrying 
some type of message that you have to decode for yourself. That's your job. There's a storyline that continues with your man of God. There's something that you are going to encounter that goes opposite to the setup in which you have grown comfortable with. Do you know sometimes people blame a man of God because the man of God is the only Jesus that people could see. And so they can't really argue with the Lord as he's at the right hand of the father, his body is at the right hand of the father. They can't argue with him, so they'll argue with you. You know, you made me leave my children. You know, you made me leave my city. You know, you made me, you made me, I was in a relationship with man-man. And I'm not in a relationship with man-man no more. You made me get rid of my pet uh, 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 parakeet. That parakeet used to pray with me. You used to, you made me get rid of him. You made me get rid of my Mustang. My Mustang, that was my first car. You made me do that. You, you, you. See, that happens when you haven't decoded the whole message of why your man of God was really sent to you. The presence of a prophet comes so that you could find out how to prosper and find out what's stopping your prosperity. The prophet comes on a prosperity agenda. That means that the prophet comes so that now you could be successful in God's point of view. Not the world, not your natural family, not your own understanding, but so that the creator that will exist after is all said and done will be able to say, well done. Are you hearing me? Well done. So at the end of the day, he could accreditate you as being successful. So when we see the prophet show up, we're seeing God's success plan showing up. So whatever was before, you must hold it in suspicion. Whatever was before, you must hold it with evaluation. Investigation. Time. Because nothing is revealed. Until time. The purpose of time is that God had a schedule where he would rawly show you what you either refuse to see, convince yourself that you wasn't seeing. And it's where God says, I'm not, I don't even care if you get offended. I'm going to show you. I don't even care if you walk away. I'm going to show you. I don't even care if you convince yourself of another truth, of another wisdom. I'm going to show you. Saints, in the word of God, when Elijah came to Elisha, Elisha said, hold on, let me go greet my parents. Let me go tell them goodbye. And Elijah said, 
what have I done to you for you to do this to me? What Elijah was saying, when I show up, All that was don't matter no more. When I show up, all that you invested your energy, your time, your moments, your trust, your trust, everything that you trusted, everybody you trusted, that don't matter no more. You in a different zone now. Saints, what the Holy Spirit doing literally is I'm, I'm dropping a lot of jewels on here because I'm showing you how when your prophet comes into your life, there's a lot of stuff that you really couldn't see. Let's go even further. Remember, there's a young servant. He walking with Elisha. All right. But he comes and runs to Elisha and says, Master, Master, alas, alas. They, they, they all out here. They coming to get us. I see old block in here. Old block. They out here to get us. One got a shank. One got a Draco. They out here. And Elisha said, Lord, I pray thee. Open his eyes that he may see. Wait, 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 wait. So, he's serving the prophet and blind. He's helping the prophet and stupid. He's assisting the prophet and he's dumb. He's supplying the prophet hus hospitality and he's retarded. No, no, no. You 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 got you got it, you got it, you got it, you gotta hear what the spirit is saying to the church. So Elisha still has to pray. For his eyes to see. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Whoa. So all while he's serving, he's still dead. You know what happened in the text? Elisha said, Lord, open up his eyes. That's some beep, 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 beep. Imagine Elisha is asking God to do something for the servant that the servant should have already had done for him if his heart was right. But because his heart not right, he's in the presence of Elisha. He's with Elisha. He's serving Elisha. He's assisting Elisha. And he still has eyeballs that's in the gates of hell. His perception is still locked up. His, 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 his concept is still locked up. He's still blind. He's still fearful of the devil. He's still in the satanic kingdom. He still is dominated by principalities while he's serving Elisha. You know why? Because his body is serving. His heart is not. His heart is still in covenant with Satan. So saints, Elisha prays, Lord, 
Open up his eyes that he may see. Wait, wait, wait. Elisha is praying for him to see. Elisha is praying for him to see. Wait, wait, wait. Today I'm praying for you to see. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare over you that your eyes will be open to see. I declare over you that your eyes and the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. When I pray a prayer like that, that's, that's hot. The soul, the soul, the soul is quickened off of a prayer like that. When I pray like that, that's, that's to open up your eyes. I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, 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 enlightened. This was the same thing Apostle Paul was moving with. When, when he said that, uh, that you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, when that happens, that means that wherever God stands on a situation, you're going to synchronize yourself and stand there. Wherever God view a thing, you're going to view it as well. Since this is our opening teaching that I just did there. Because if you look at what just happened was, I just took you in the word at how your man of God comes with a message. The man of God is, is there for your sake, for you to hear something from the Lord about your life that you're not seeing. Saints, let me say this to you as well. It's not God's job to seek you. It's not God's job to stay connected to you. It's your job to stay connected to God. It's your job to stay connected to the prophet. It's not God's job to stay connected to you. It's not God's job to stay in oneness with you. It's your job to stay connected to God. Your prophet don't come into your life to seek you. That's why if you leave, the prophet will let you leave and keep on going. See, what you got to understand is that your prophet is really God coming on the earth saying, you want me? Do you want me? Do you, do you? Okay, follow me. You don't want me? Okay, you free, you free, you free to do what you gotta do. <laughs> and see, what you don't understand is the prophet is Jesus continuing his life on earth. So Jesus already know that he done did everything to declare his love. He done laid down his life. He done did everything. So what Jesus does is Jesus says, you want me? Okay, follow me. You don't want me? Okay, fine, fine, fine. That's, that's, the prophet imitates that exact mindset. Saints, over the history of my ministry, right? Uh, have you ever seen me show endorsement to anybody, favor to anybody? You ever seen me do that before? You ever seen me kept going like you ever seen me keep teaching? You ever seen me keep on giving revelation deep and deep and deep? Let me ask you something. So what really happened? What God reaches out through the prophet to a vessel that has greatness, potential. They have a future, possibly, in heaven. So what the prophet does is reach out to them and, 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 and give them a chance. 
But if they don't take the chance, does the profit stop in effectiveness? Does the profit stop in the, uh, the progress, the accomplishment, the success, the wholeness, the power, the glory? No. <laughs> the profit keeps on going. You know why? Because really, it was simply just a chance for the person to reconcile themselves with their creator. Their creator is just walking in the prophet. Saints, what I want you to catch is this. What I want you to catch is this. Lebo santa ba rebe. Zorra ba santa ma rebe en gesto rebe kisto. Rande de socorre de socorre ve. Saints, I'm here as a gift to you. I'm a gift to you. The day that the day that you choose what you choose is not stopping nothing but you. <laughs> I, see, I gotta be raw like this because if I don't be raw like this, it's like it's kind of crazy. Like some people will never catch this. You already have somebody in the earth that I could call and place them to play you. I got to say it raw so that you understand what I'm saying. Some of y'all on this line, you carnal. You think I'm talking about a female. You tell us, oh, what you mean, prophet? You could get another woman. You could get another... Son, you can get a daughter, you can get a assistant. Listen, I'm telling you that I already know your carbon copy on earth. I'm saying that all I have done in ministry. See, I can say God, but you won't understand. So I'm 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 just I want you to understand. Remember what Jesus said, believe in God, but believe also in me. Look at John 14. Why is he saying that? Because God is often so spoke about that people actually lose the effectiveness of what's really going on. Somebody say, I believe in God, but you look at them. They, they smoke, they drink, they do everything. You're like, you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God. Well, 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 you ain't even changed. Yeah, but I believe in God. So when you hear believe in God, it's a far thing. What Jesus was a man saying, believe also in me. Cause, cause I'm, I'm, I'm here living out live what God is doing in the heavenlies. Saints, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. You got a carbon copy that look just like you, will act just like you, will perform just like you. You got them in the earth. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you don't want God's plan, your carbon copy does. We just call them to take your place where you left off. Saints, there was people that knew me years, they knew of me years ago. They didn't really understand that until they saw it. You say, well, prophet, well, why are you teaching on this? What does this guy do with anything? Here's what it got to do with it. I'm telling you that God, he needs you because he made you for him. But if you don't want him, he already got somebody that will supply what you refuse. He already got them in the earth. God never stopped being God when the one third left, but they all was needed by God. Do you understand when he lost the one third? Those were angels of healing. Those was angels of blessing. Those were prophetic angels. Those were angels of deliverance. Those was angels of wisdom. Those was angels of prayer. Those was angels of finances. They are, they are 
Robo Sharamanta Robo. There was angels of joy, angels of peace, angels of love. Those was our angels. But saints, when they left, God didn't stop. God just had their carbon copy waiting to take their place. So saints, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Find out the code of why your man of God is in your life. Find out the code. Some of you all can find out the code and then you'll unfind it out. And when you unfind something out, it doesn't mean that you didn't discover it. You did discover it, but it was stolen. Mark chapter four talks about the word being sown into someone's heart and it could be stolen. For something to be stolen is different for it to never arrive. If something is stolen, it means that it did arrive. It did successfully reach its destination, but it was not protected. And therefore, its exposure allowed it to be snatched. Broadcast number two. 